4-1 congruent figures. Now the objective of this video is to recognize congruent figures and their corresponding parts. Alright, to help, to kind of give you a little reference that you probably know of to help you kind of start thinking about congruent figures is an example of a puzzle. Alright, you see here we have three puzzle pieces. All right, that we still have to fill into our puzzle here. All right. Well, if you're good at puzzles, you, you you've probably already figured out what piece goes to, goes in which hole. All right. But let's try to figure out which one goes in B. Okay. Well, as you can see, none of none of them are really in the correct orientation to fit into B. But that doesn't actually change the shape or size or anything to do with the puzzle piece at all. It's the same puzzle piece regardless of which way you turn it. Alright? And you also know that this puzzle piece, regardless of whichever way it's turned, is going to be the exact size to fit in this hole for letter B. Alright? It doesn't matter that it's been rotated because all you have to do is turn it around to where this little piece here faces to the left and then it'll fit right in that hole all right that's you know so with congruent figures that leads me into my next slide with congruent figures they will always have the same size and shape but you can move them you can flip them you can turn them just like puzzle pieces all right and they will always have the same size and shape all right because like this one, all they did was turn this one around backwards, where if you took that puzzle piece and turned it over, it doesn't change the size or shape, it's just turned over. That's all it is. You turn it back over, it'll fit right in the hole. I mean, heck, you probably wouldn't want to do this, but you could turn the entire puzzle over and, and fit the piece in if you turned it upside down. I mean, just because you move it, flip it, or rotate it, or turn it, it doesn't actually change the size or shape. And that's congruent figures. Congruent figures have the same size and shape. When two figures are congruent, you can slide, flip, or turn one so that it fits exactly on another one, as shown below. So we're going to learn how to determine if geometric figures are congruent. All right, and as we go through, you can just think back to a puzzle and puzzle pieces. All right, doesn't matter if it's upside down. If you rotate it 90 degrees, you can always turn it back and fit it in its place in the puzzle. Alright, so our question that we're gonna that we're gonna go over in this video is how can you recognize congruent figures and their corresponding parts? Alright, we're gonna answer this through this video and I'll show you the answer at the end. So here is your vocab. Congruent polygons. Make sure you put this in your notes guys. Congruent polygons have congruent corresponding parts that are matching sides and angles. When you name congruent polygons, you must list corresponding vertices in the same order. So what does that mean? Well, here we have an example. All right. Here we have an example. We have polygon A, B, C, D, and F, G, H, E. What they mean in the same order is if you A here is congruent if you were to flip this around, all right, kind of like a three-dimensional flip, out, you know, bring it out of the screen and lay it back over. E would be the same angle as A. So you'd have to. So if you wanted to start with A on this one, you'd have to start with E on this one, just like they did here, all right? And then they went up to B. Well, B corresponds to which angle over here? Well, it's F. All right. So if you went A, B, you'd have to go E, F, and so on. C and G, and then D and H. All right. The reason they do this is so if you say this polygon's congruent to this one, you don't have to have a picture to be able to list all the corresponding parts like they have done over here. All right? You could look at this and go, well, AB and then EF. So you automatically know that AB is congruent to, to site EF because of the way 
they listed the vertices of the polygons. Same way with the angles. You would know that angle A and angle E are congruent because they're in the same place when you name the polygons. Like we know, without even looking over here, I can tell you that angle C is congruent to angle G because they're both listed in the same place. They're both listed third. So they're both listed in the same place. Okay, so it's important when you're naming congruent polygons to name them in the same order. Name the vertices, the corresponding vertices, in the same order. All right? So let's look down here to problem number one, finding corresponding parts. If HIJK is congruent to LMNO, what are the corresponding parts? Well, this kind of goes back up to here like we were doing. We know that H line HI and line LM, since they're the first two letters, and it's the first side that's listed, we know that those sides are the same. All right, we also know IJ, these two, and M and N, these two. So there we go. They listed that one. And then we know JK and NO. And look, that's the third one. We also know J, I'm sorry, KH and OL. Right, don't forget the last one in the first one. KH, OL. So we know that as well. And if you look over here, it sums it up. We know that KH, all right, and we know OL. We know JK, and we know NO. So those two are concurrent. Uh, JI, what was JI? JI would be NM. All right, so you can always go back. And then HI, we know is congruent to LM. All right, and same thing with the angles. Since H and L are listed first, we know that they're congruent. I and M are next, so they're congruent. Then J and N, and then K O, K and O. All right. So you don't need a figure to list the corresponding parts, right? Because they because they're listed in the same order. So here, just to make sure you got it, I want you to try this. This is going to be a you try. If triangle, that's what this symbol means, if triangle WYS is congruent to triangle MKV, what are the corresponding parts? So pause the video, take a minute or two, and list me all the corresponding parts, meaning sides and angles. All right, so let's list the sides first. And then we'll list the angles second. All right, so the sides. Well, we know that WY, all right, we know that has to be congruent to MK because those are, that's the first, those are the first two vertices listed. So that is the first side. We know WY and MK. All right, for the second one, we can say YS. We know that YS is going to have to be congruent to KV. All right. And then we know that SW is congruent to VM. All right. Because, like I said, they're all listed in the same position. So that's how we know those are the congruent sides. So if we were to draw a triangle, we could easily label what's congruent to what, just based on this statement. All right. We also know angle W will be congruent to angle M. We know angle Y congruent to angle K. And we know angle S is congruent to angle V. All right, so hopefully that these are the answers you got for your you try. It's like I said, it's just important to remember that the vertices are listed in order. All right, so this one to this, 
this, can go into this, and so forth. All right. Now, regardless of how many vertices it has, it could be an octagon. Well, their their vertices are still going to be listed in order. All right. Number two, problem two, using corresponding parts. All right, we got a picture of an SR-71 Blackbird here. And it says, the wings of the SR-71 Blackbird suggest congruent triangles. Because as you know, an airplane has symmetry. All right, if it didn't, it wouldn't fly straight. So we know an airplane has symmetry, so we know that this part, this part of the wing here is going to be congruent to this part of the wing here. All right, but then they ask, what's the measure of angle D? Well, they didn't give us the measure of angle D. They gave us E in this triangle, and they gave us B and C in this triangle. So how are we going to find what the measure of angle D is? All right, we're going to have to use corresponding parts. All right, we know that angle D and angle what are congruent? We know it's congruent to angle A. So if we find the measure of A, we're going to have the measure of D as well. So we have to find the measure of angle A. How do we do that? Well, we know all three of these angles inside this triangle have to add up to 180. That's the rule. That's how it's always going to be. So measure of angle A plus 30 plus 75 equals 180. Combine the 30 and the 75 to get 105. So we know the measure of angle A plus 105 is 180. So subtract the 105, whoops, 105 from both sides. And we know that the measure of angle A has to be 75. All right, so we know that this is actually an isosceles triangle. We know this one is 2 because we know they're congruent triangles. So since we know that angle A is 75, D has to be 75 as well. There's no way around it. So if you were going to bubble this in, you would bubble in answer B. All right. Hopefully this is making sense to you. All right. Because we know, just to review, we know D was congruent to A. So instead of worrying about trying to find D because we didn't have F, all we did was come over here, found the measure of angle A, and we know A and D are congruent. So if A is 75, D is 75 as well. All right. So now, pretty quick example. I want you to do this one. This is another got it, or you try. I don't know if I'll start naming them that or not. But here's you, you try. Suppose triangle WIS is congruent to triangle MKV. If the measure of angle W is 62, and the measure of angle Y is 35, what's the measure of angle V? All right, pause the video, take a few moments, see if we can figure it out. Okay, so we know, let's go ahead and write this out. We know W, oops, angle W is congruent to angle M. We know angle Y is congruent to angle K. And we know that angle, oops, that's supposed to be an angle sign. I don't know why I wrote a W. Angle S is congruent to angle B. All right. So if you notice, they gave us angle W and angle Y but then ask us to find angle V. Well, we don't have M or K at all. all right? well, we do for corresponding triangles, but for the sake of this, we don't have M and K. But if you look up here, we didn't have the measure of angle D either, or F, but we were still able to find the measure of angle D because it was congruent to A. So the reason I did this first is because we have this angle, we have this angle, but we don't have this one. We don't have the third one, but we can easily find it because we know that they are, that they all three have to add up to 180. And we know that V is congruent to S. So once we add up W and Y, subtract it from 180, and find the measure of S, we know S and V have the same exact measure. All right. So let's set this up. We know that the measure of angle S plus 62 plus 35 is going to have to equal 180. Oops. 
So 60, that's the measure of angle 5. That's supposed to be an M. Let me fix that a little bit. So the measure of angle 5, and then 62 and 35 is 97. We know that equals 180. All right. And then we're going to take the 97 and subtract it from 180. All right, so we know that the measure of angle 5 equals 83 degrees. All right. Why did I say 5? That's an S. Sorry about that. Hopefully it's not going to confuse you. That's an, that's an S. I was calling it a 5. So we know the measure of angle S is 83 degrees. All right. Well, since we've already figured out, because of our corresponding figures, and we know the vertices are listed in, cor in the same corresponding order, we know that S is congruent to V. So we know that the measure of angle S equals 83. So we also know that the measure of angle V equals 83 degrees as well. All right. So corresponding figures, really not that bad. They're not that difficult. Just think about it. Figure out which vertices are congruent to, to what. And then you can find your information. All right. Let's move on. Finding core, uh, finding congruent triangles. Are all triangles congruent? Justify your answer. So to help visualize, so here's our picture. All right, here's our picture. Remember, pictures are really valuable in geometry. All right, but sometimes the picture they give you isn't always the easiest way to look at the picture. All right, what you may have to do sometimes is redraw the picture like they did here. They took this picture, which there's nothing wrong with it. It just might be a little confusing to find out what's congruent to what. So they took it and they separated it out like this. All right. We know E and A are congruent because they have the same number of arcs inside the angle. So they, they drew out the triangle and they put E and A in the same position and they marked them congruent. We know B and D are congruent. All right, so they marked, so they put B and D in the same position and marked them congruent. We know B, A, and E, D are congruent, so they put them in the same spot as well and marked them congruent. So, now, do we have enough information to justify that these angle triangles are congruent? All right, so let's look at the diagram. Look at the diagram. We know A, B is congruent to E, D. All right, we also know that B, C equals 4 which is the same thing as DC. So we know those sides are congruent. We know AC is 6, we know EC is 6, so we know those sides are congruent. Now let's look at the angles. We know angle A is congruent to angle E, we know B is congruent to angle D. Alright? So, we also know that angle C here, alright, there are vertical angles up here, right? And if you remember, Vertical angles are congruent. All right, vertical angles are congruent. So we know that angle that both angle C's and both triangles have to be congruent. All right. So but therefore, and that's what they said here. Vertical angles are congruent. So we know that th that both angle C's are the same. So therefore, by definition of congruent triangles, we know triangle ABC is congruent to triangle E. D, C. And if you notice again, they listed the vertices in the same order. A is congruent to E, so it came first. B is congruent to D, so it came next. And then C is congruent to C, so they listed it last. Alright? That's important. Make sure you list them in the same order. Alright? Here's your U try. You got it. Is triangle ABD congruent to triangle CBD? Justify your answer. So take a few seconds and see if you can figure this out. Alright, so at first glance, they look the same. Alright, at first glance, they look the same. But, here's the kicker. We know, since this is an isosceles triangle, that angle A and angle C are congruent. 
but that and we know that DA and DC are congruent but that's all we know we can't assume that this meets at a right angle you never know this could be 91 degrees this could be 89 degrees all right which would also make these off up here so these so if these aren't congruent these wouldn't be congruent and if these aren't congruent these two segments aren't congruent we know that that db has to equal db because it's the um reflexive property so we have to know that but other than this we don't have enough information here all right i think they wanted you to assume that this was a right angle but we just don't have enough information all right so not enough information And the reason I say I think they wanted to, to assume that this was a right angle is because in the book's answer for this, they make that a right angle. But they don't give you enough information to tell you that that that, that line DB meets B, I mean meets AC at a right angle. It doesn't say it's perpendicular. It doesn't. It, it could even say it's bisector of some kind. But they don't even say that. So not enough information here you can't assume anything you can't assume anything so that's all we know but we don't have enough information to finish it out so it's just kind of a trick question all right i don't really like that question that's what the book gave us but yeah so you have to make sure that you can justify it just because i ask or the book asks or a test asks are these two triangles congruent and they give you two triangles that visibly look congruent if you can't prove it you have to say they're not congruent you have to be able to prove it what do i mean by prove it up here we proved it these are marked the same okay all three of these sides on both triangles are marked congruent these two angles are con marked congruent these two angles here at c are vertical angles so we know they're congruent so therefore we've proved all the sides and all the angles congruent so we know they're congruent triangles here can't we just can't do it all right theorem 4 1 third angles theorem this is really one of them theorems that you're going to read and you're going to be like i knew that well here it is in words it says recall the triangle angle sum theorem the the sum of the measures of, of the angles in a triangle is 180. All right. So this is the third angles theorem. If two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another, then the third angles are congruent. And again, you're probably like, well, I knew that. Why'd you have to tell me that? Well, just to make sure that you think about it. All right. If we know A is congruent to D, if we know B is congruent to E, all right, well, C will have to be congruent to F. All right. There's no way around it. If A is congruent to D and B is congruent to E, then the last two have to be congruent. All right, no way around it. There's no way around it. They have to be congruent. All right. Proving triangles congruent. Here I got a little proof of proving these two triangles congruent. So given LM is congruent to LO, because they're marked, and MN is congruent to ON because it's marked, angle M is congruent to angle O, it's marked, and angle MLN is congruent to angle OLN, again, because they are marked. We want to prove that these two triangles are congruent to each other. All right, so number one, our statement, we listed the two sides that we knew are congruent. LM is congruent to LO, and MN is congruent to ON. That's our given. And we know that LN is congruent to LN. That's the reflexive property of congruence. You should remember that. And then angle M is congruent to angle O. And then angle MLN is congruent to angle OLN. That's more given information. It's right there. All right. Now, we also know that angle MNL is congruent to angle ONL. How do we know that? That's our third angles theorem. All right, that's our third angles theorem. If two angles are congruent, the third one, the third ones have to be. All right. So now 
we have proven all three sides congruent. We've proven all three angles congruent. So therefore, by the definition of congruent triangles, our triangles are congruent. All right. And again, they're listed in corresponding order. They're listed in the same exact order. L is congruent to L, M is congruent to O, N is congruent to N. All right. So here's our last U try. Given the information here, prove these two triangles congruent. So pause the video for a few moments and figure this out. You don't have to use a two column proof here. You can do a paragraph proof which you just write the stuff out. You can use any method of proof you want. Prove these two triangles congruent. All right, here's the book answer. I actually like the book answer, so I'm gonna use the book answer. They say angle A is congruent to angle D, that's given, and angle ABE is congruent to angle DBC because vertical angles are congruent. And then we also know that angle, um, what is it at? AEB is congruent to angle DCB because of the third angle's theorem. All right, these are congruent because of vertical angles. Since we've proven those congruent, we know that these two angles have to be congruent because of the third angle's theorem. All right, and then also we know that all three pairs of sides are congruent and that's given information because not only did they write it here, it's provided on our picture. So the two triangles are congruent by the definition of congruent triangles. All right, and again, Make sure, make sure, make sure that you write the vertices in, in the same order, all right? You can write it ABE as long as you write DBC. You can write AEB as long as you write DCB. You could write BAE as long as you write BDC, all right? You have to list them in the same order. There's no way around it. You have to list them in the same order. All right. Now, remember that focus question I showed you at the beginning? How can you recognize congruent figures in the corresponding parts? Well, here's your answer. Hopefully, you were thinking about it throughout the video. Two figures are congruent if their corresponding parts are congruent. Corresponding parts are located in the same positions in congruent figures. All right. So, hopefully, you've been paying attention. Hopefully you've understood everything in this video. Here's your ticket in the door. It's five questions. It shouldn't take you very long, especially the first three. What I want you to know is complete the following statements. Number one, given that triangle QXR is congruent to triangle NYC, what side is congruent to XQ and what angle is congruent to Y? Given band is congruent to luck, what angle is congruent to angle U? What side is congruent to side DB? And we rearranged the letters. We took band and did N, D, B, A. So I want you to rewrite luck to correspond to the way they rewrote band. All right, number three, in triangle map and triangle tie, angle A is congruent to angle I, angle P is congruent to angle E. What is the relationship between angle M and T? And then B, if the measure of angle A is 52 and the measure of angle P is 36, what is the measure of angle T? And then over here, the open ending. Number four, what do you think you might need to know that things are congruent in your everyday life? And number five, Walter sketched the diagram below. He claims it shows the two polygons are congruent. What information is missing to support his claim? All right. Make sure you answer these five questions. If you need to, look back in the video. And make sure you have this ready to go when you come to class tomorrow. All right. Good luck.